Judge Gunnery. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Alright, I'll start my time now. So first off, as the first speaker on the affirmation uh, team for the motion, the USFG should provide military aid to the Nigerian government to combat Boko Haram, I will start off with my topic case. So observation one, resolutional analysis, we will define a couple terms. Military aid will be defined as military-led assistance. Combat will be defined as take action against. And the rest of the definition should be contextual. We'll define should as ought to, which should, uh, makes this a call to action, so there should be a policy round, and we believe this provides the most fairest division of rounds. So next, our criteria is net benefits. You should weigh this debate on which team provides a great net, greater net benefit. Um, observation three is background. Currently, Boko Haram is terrorizing Nigeria um, and has killed 5,000 civilians from 2009 to 2014 and, is, and kidnaps women and children from schools and all over the place. So the plan text... Can you talk about it? Huh? Louder. All right. So the plan text is that the U.S. federal government will send five Global Hawk surveillance drones to help Ni the Nigerian government locate kidnapped civilians and also learn the structure of Boko Haram and its movements. And if the program is successful, we will increase this to 10 Global Hawks. So the actors here, agent of action and agent of enforcement, will be the U.S. federal government, uh, the USFG military and CIA, yes. Um, so the Global Hawk drones, right, they only do surveillance, they won't be able to shoot, like, Predator missiles? Um, the Global Hawk drones have the ability, but they will be mainly used for surveillance. But when you say mainly, like, are you going to be shooting Predator missiles at all? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, so the actors, agent of, uh, agent of action will be, and agent of enforcement will be the USFG military and the CIA. Funding will be deficit spending, and time frame will be immediately. So now I'd like to move on to our first advantage about saving lives. So uh, uniqueness, uh, currently there's limited intel on Boko Haram's strong points and movements. So we don't exactly know how many people are in Boko Haram and what's going on, like what is Boko Haram doing? What is Boko Haram planning next? And where is it strong and where is it weak in Nigeria? The Nigerian government has limited intel on this. Um, also, they're, they're having a hard time tracking down these kidnapped Nigerians. It's, it's been hard locating where these kidnapped civilians are, where these children and women are. And so the link here is that uh, there are two points. First, the, um, in, the plan actually increases intel on Boko Haram's troops and structures, so we learn about their movements. And it also locates more missing children because we have greater surveillance capabilities over Nigeria and therefore can locate these children more effectively. So the internal link here is that we increase the effectiveness of Nigerian government's fight against um, Boko Haram because um, now uh, the Nigerian government knows where and when to strike and what uh, Boko Haram is going to do next because we know about their movements and the, ab uh, the abilities of Boko Haram. And it also allows the U.S. to find these uh, missing children. And so this impacts out to saving lives because we put families back together. These women and children who were abducted from schools and places like that are now reunited with their family because we provided the intel to do that. Yes? Um, why do we need intel to do this? Or how is intel going to be able to intel, get family back? We need surveillance drones so that we can actually see where these children are. We don't know where they are right now, so we need intel. We need surveillance drones to locate them. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. All right. So, sure, we have the intel. What allows these families to get together after we have the intel? The Nigerian government is taking action against Boko Haram, so the Nigerian government is taking kids back from these right. uh, from these um, terrorists, and so Boko, uh, the Nigerian government, we can give intel, oh, these, these civilians are here, and then Ni the Nigerian government is able to effectively take action and take these children back, and also we save troop lives because they know they aren't randomly attacking, and they know where and when Boko Haram is going to strike next. So now I'd like to address the second advantage about spillover. So currently, Boko Haram is uh, very dangerous in the region and is spreading, and it's also destabilizing other countries like Liberia and things like that, who are uh, currently plagued by Ebola. And so Boko Haram is basically causing conflict in the region, and that can that conflict can spread and actually destabilize um, the the, the, uh, the countries around it. So uh, the link here is that the plan actually helps. Um, the plan actually increases intelligence against Boko Haram, making the, US, making the Nigerian government more effective in its fight against Boko Haram, and therefore the uh, Nigerian government can actually uh, determine where and when to attack, what to do, and so we actually limit 
the uh, spread of Boko Haram to other countries. And so the internal link of this is that by, by limiting the spread of Boko Haram and lim limiting the effectiveness of Boko Haram, we stop, it from act we stop their terrorism and their conflict from spreading to other countries. If we don't take action, then essentially Boko Haram's conflict and violence is going to spread to other regions and other countries. And this uh, leads to very bad impacts and things like death and suffering um, because Boko, but because the conflict will actually be spread by Boko Haram, and Boko Haram is going to spread this conflict to other countries. So the impact of our plan is that by increasing our effectiveness against Boko Haram, we stop them from actually spreading conflict around Africa, therefore impacting out to saving lives and improving the quality of life for other countries that have that currently are not plagued by Boko Haram, but are that could be subject to Boko Haram's terror, and um, which is why we need to stop the conflict now. So, um, I'd like to go over uh, the general AF case. We will be sending five Global Hawk drones and to gather intelligence and surveil the area in Boko Haram, and therefore, this impacts out to saving, this saves lives, it saves children's lives, it saves these abducted civilians' lives, and it helps it, uh, make the Nigerian government more effective in its fight, and this actually links out to um, the spillover and stopping Boko Haram's conflict from leaking out to other countries in Africa. Thank you. Is it me too? Oh, one off case. Okay, how many pages do I need for the off? Uh, two mags for the off, um, and then what's it called? Case, and yeah, there's off case on it. Don't worry, I'll this. First of all, it's empirically proven that with uh, with uh, terrorism, we were only reason they were intervening in the first place was placed with oil. The ability for them to talk about spilling over in the Middle East, there's no coincidence why we are always intervening in these areas that have something to benefit as oil was the main problem that why we invaded the Iraq or these areas because we always have a capitalist tendency sector and capitalism creates terrorism. Citizens are fueled into extremist groups because they are unable to make enough money to feed their family after capitalism conduct uh, their uh, command all of their resources into uh, uh, into the world where they're able to make more money. They have to have more outlets to different outlets to stop and spend more money. Third argument policies that prevent terrorism are due to the rule of capitalism because it only, it only causes the imperialism policies as well as structure of the rules placed in terrorism. It's really important. The argument here was that the United States policies in itself are based upon the idea of helping corporations or helping money that are only helping itself. Why are they going into these areas or specifically our second heavy second daily second daily talk sorry second daily talk about how we are creating a terrorist threat because of capitalism in itself. We always want someone to attack us. We always create there, so we have to attack them back. I know the 9-11 might have been a con emergency. We're serious about that, but why did we go to Iraq? The construction threat of hegemony, or why we have to go, it was a capitalist foundation, which is very bad. Additionally, by definition, military aid was created by to improve imperialistic interests. This came from Wikipedia and other uh, sources. We talked about military aid was created for the foundation of uh, capitalistic inspirations, how we must aid people to help them uh, they have monetary benefit now, the impact. Questioning of capital tendencies is a prerequisite to ethical determination. It has uh, it negates one divine life as, our, as process for cap as, for, as, for, as producers and capitals are both turned into machine for constant for constant race for production and materials become measurements or for humanity humans become interacting with each other not based on ethical principles but because of economic ones. We have an a priori ethical obligation to reject global capitalism under any moral theory. Uh, the, the, the capitalism makes its victims anonymous, showing the ability to find value. Like Zick and Daly talk about how threats were created for the idea of simply uh, capitalism itself is for the thorough link, but instead how we create this problem in first with additional links. They also talk about how we form relationships with people, not because they are our friends, but instead because they have some gain to get out of them. Additionally, the second argument was that neoliberalism governmentally ensures war disease and environment to class, econo the economic situation of procedural people like at a disposable research for producing capitalism, only stopping this from uh, politics and grand extinction. Giroux talked about how neoliberalism, the intertwined economic markets, always created the idea of the Holocaust, the scrape, but that we needed to kill or scrape with these people because they were the problem in acquiring our money was the problem that causes Jerome talked about how this a logic of refusal of this logic only cultivates more exchange because there's further and further conflict which is really really bad now the alternative view negating as an alternative to their inherent oppression of the status quo 
We need to analyze the flaws in the system to find a precondition for the movement away from capitalism, inevitable collapse. This is key to developing any political strategy. Harold talks in the board that we need a way to spark the revolution before the revolution can ever happen. We need the idea for the judge to change or the judge to have a pedagogical, pedagogical teaching that capitalism is bad. Framework. The role of the bell is to vote for the debaters to best reduce capitalism logic. First of all, way be a first method against debate, uh, de 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 for the debate against our debate is a uh, pedagogical activity. Yes? Can you clarify your tagline for the alternative? Oh, all right. View negating as an old, and view negating as our alternative to their inherent oppression of the status quo. We need to analyze flaws in the system before we can find a precondition for the movement away from capitalism in those All right. I'll just go back to framework. Debate is a pedagogical activity, meaning that you are, that the plan never really happens. Fiat is illusory, means that you evaluate capitalism first. You evaluate it can be an instrument and look at the system of capital uh, ad additionally and prefer our interpretation. First of all, it's a gateway. Evaluating one method of debate is a starting point for political critique. If you have a false understanding of the problem, your solution will fare. So, point B. Their offense doesn't matter because it's created in the disguise of capitalism. The ability where they have to consistently protect or go to the country is the fake idea that why of this wretched construction in the first place. Some points the epistemology. Epistemological level of knowledge is in value. Neutral pr production can't be specific preparation of those that help our private scientific and military elite. They help the military elite. And the employment uh, of systematic capital their knowledge should be held suspect. And even if the one that our alternative doesn't do anything, so it's so all you vote negative cap. Uh, there a pile of uh, we must go away from capitalism. Logic rationally breaks away from the status quo, producing scholarship, which is key to stop the pressure. You need to produce anti capitalist scholarship. Um, is it? Yeah, we'll build the case, please. All right, first, six hedge trains. Hedge results in endless war, infinite reason for genocide, infinite reason for endless wars, yet built. Henry Jolson analyst wars the infinite response for genocide, the ability that we are able to always go into places to justify that they have this problem, it's a threat argument that we always have to humiliate the fellow government has to always go into it always it's a justification for infinite number of genocides because we could always go and protect something. This was really the creation of the Mohadin, the ability why we want to fight Russia in our hegemony second. I mean, we want to fight Russia in our hegemony problem, and we simply uh, uh, created the uh, Al Qaeda, which once again backfired against us. These threat constructions that we have because of our hegemony only backfired against us. Additionally, uh, multi-polarity solved for. War. Uh, uh, the the University of Delaware, first of all, Iraq and Afghanistan, what could have been easily solved, it's uh, the easiest option of multi polarity policy. The United States was not key, additionally, uh, counter United States security guarantees to provoke war when we're not able to use our security. Israel is a very good example of the United States was not actually helping the Israel Palestine conflict or going or intervening in these problems. We were able to solve multiple things, and Ford's argument is complete economic United States dominance is better for economy, leads to, to, uh, leads to another thing because we're not intertwining in other places. First, uh, next argument, the United States key and private interest to co op or cooperation policies. We're able to solve a better thing. Initially, there's no, six, sorry, uh, next argument, no impact. United States hedge is in key. United States is not the key actor. Other countries can provide it too. Your use of imperialism through these arguments are only inherently bad because why do we have to use without you? Let's go to case specifically. First of all, value net benefits. We are going to outweigh additionally. Don't vote about value net benefits because it's not going to be really important. You should all prefer our interpretation because representation or prerequisite interpreting of uh, policy things. They say that policy run is first of all key, but the policy runs are not really key in the first place. We should not like representation because the representation should shape our policies and how we view things in the first place. Therefore, you should evaluate our framework because representation shape the way that we have policies. Go to their surveillance or plans your surveillance argument. First of all, the United States government maintaining, uh, the United States is always telling the Nigerian government what to do. Why do they have to attack? Why do these people allow to say the Nigerian government has to attack after race surveillance? The idea of controlling the Nigerian government and telling them that they have to do this is really problematic. Additionally, all their offenses garner all their surveillance. First of all, surveillance doesn't really do anything if the Nigerian government isn't able effectively to break down Boko Haram. This is uh, this, uh, Boko Haram. This is a very key component. They're missing an internal link to why the Nigerian government is strong enough to even fight Boko Haram. They're saying Boko Haram is really strong. They're not saying any military support. So you should hold them to a very high threshold. So why the Nigerian government can't do this?
So starting time now. So first what I'd like to go over is basically the case that they brought up. So the case that they brought up was that um, capitalism is really bad. So they brought up that um, basically it causes people to incentivize and try to make money. And also uh, ultimately it will also create terrorists which will try to exploit these resources. In addition, it leads to just resource production and a lack of moral ethics which ultimately causes the collapse of society. But, and, and they also brought up the alternative of analyzing flaws and basically that we need movement away from capitalism. Uh, so to address this, uh, they're basically, what their case is actually, it's just a critique for the status quo. But however, in our case, what we have is deeply embedded values of capitalism. So basically what we're offering is the best di distribution of ground because we're using the deeply embedded value of capitalism in our society. Looking at the United States, what we have is a capitalist society. So obviously for this debate round, if we're going to be policy makers of the United States, as parliamentary debate's intention is to, tra uh, to train policy makers in the U.S., obviously we should be looking at capitalism as uh, the premise for education. So obviously it provides the best, um, basically uh, it provides the best fairness in this round. And moving on to um, basically by having, uh, uh, we can't have this uh, critique again because it also, uh, basically what they're trying to do is silence capitalist values, but uh, we, should, uh, we should still be able to leverage our impacts against what they brought up in their case. And moving on to, we actually provide the most educational debate in today's round because obviously plan, the plan makes us better uh, good uh, U.S. policymakers and uh, basically what we offer is more education actually for the United States people. And also um, what they have is that uh, we can actually perm and do both. Uh, looking at the philosopher Hegel, basically we can have a synthesis that will enable us to actually have something better than the uh, antithesis and the thesis. So what we have in this debate around, uh, what uh, our affirmation side can also do is uh, have a permutation. So basically in this round what we have is that we still want to actually save these people because we can't simply analyze in the status quo. Uh, yes? I just want to make sure, this is a permutation do both, right? Yeah, permutation do both. So basically in the status quo we can't quickly analyze and completely switch a value and they haven't really provided any clear alternative. They're just saying that we should try to find some kind of alternative, but they don't really have an alternative. They're just saying find an alternative. So with our synthesis what we have is that we still carry out the plan text which is that the U.S. Uh, federal government should, um, so we have incremental solvency with this. So um, basically our plan, uh, by carrying it through with a permutation, what we offer is that we can actually save some lives uh, before we completely change the system because saving lives is still valuable and uh, ultimately moving on to their six solvency press, which, okay, so head strength and stack. Uh, so basically what they brought up with head strength is that uh, basically what will happen is there will be genocide and uh, capitalism leads to the ability to humiliate other people and it created Al-Qaeda. However, if you look at their hedge turn, capitalism in this case actually isn't going to lead to genocide. What it's actually uh, preventing is people just committing genocide and just killing people. So obviously we aren't just going to lead to genocide by promoting capitalism in this specific case. And we aren't going to create something like Al-Qaeda. What we're actually doing is we're actually fighting a terrorist organization, which is Boko Haram, which also counters their term. And also moving on, they said uh, stated that we should have multipolarity. So basically, people don't uh, just uh, take advantage of everyone else. But however, in a multipolar world, we obviously have conflicts. And in refute to this, looking at a multipolar world and what they propose as simply just their antithesis, what they have is by going simply to their antithesis, what they have is just a world with a lot of proxy wars. Like if we look in the past, with a multipolar world and alternative that they're offering just with their alternative, they offer a more unstable world because obviously with multipolarity, there'll still be uh, proxy wars such as the United States fighting Russia. And also moving on to their other headstring, which is that uh, you also basically have economic dominance. Uh, and this will actually happen due to the fact that we're promoting, somehow promoting capitalist ideals through this. However, this is not is, is completely irrelevant as well because the U.S. isn't ensuring economic dominance because this is not economically related. And also moving on to what they brought up about imperialism, basically they said, uh, why do we have to tell Nigeria to do something? It's like humiliating uh, Nigeria and observing their values, but however, in this case, what they fail to recognize is that Nigeria has already declared war on uh, Boko Haram, so basically we aren't actually leading to this um, action in which we're making uh, Nigeria do something. We're actually uh, promoting their free idea, which is basically that they should fight Boko Haram. And um, obviously, um, 
moving on to the idea that uh, that they brought up, which is that it shouldn't really be a policy round, and we should look at representations first. So in response to that, basically, uh, we can actually look at both representations and merge them in the uh, synthesis. So basically, by merging the ideas that we have both brought up in this round, what we can have is ultimately a better solution through the permutation. And uh, finally, moving on to what they brought up about their uh, our actual case. So basically, what they brought up was that our offense doesn't matter because it promotes capitalism. However, they haven't actually refuted our stock issues. So uh, we still know that uh, Boko Haram is actually terrorizing people, and people are dying in the status quo. And uh, there's also a spillover of this violence into other countries that are affected uh, by Ebola. And basically, Boko Haram is spreading and trying to take advantage. So they haven't really uh, had any solvency to the actual issue that we're debating in the resolution today. So basically, what will happen is, uh, but simply just by passing their antithesis, or antithesis, basically, they just completely change the system. We don't really know how they're going to change the system. There isn't any time frame for their solvency, which is that this, uh, the world is completely freed of capitalism. So basically, they don't really. They have an extremely vague. Uh, uh, critique. So basically, we can't really determine what kind of solvency they're going to get because they don't have an actual alternative. And also, they aren't really solving for the fact that a lot more people will die in Africa. And basically, Boko Haram is running rampant, and we need to do something to solve this problem. Thank you. making a case conceding the role of the ballot as well as not having any offense at all against the K. They're making this argument how they're, they're going to be using the deeply embedded value of capitalism and somehow that's good for policy making, that's going to be more education. But the problem is that then they're conceding all of the links again that they're linking into capitalism. So you can give 100% solvency to all of the links that they're linking into capitalism. They're going to be representing capitalism. And their argument of using the deeply embedded values of capitalism is really, really bad because it's going to justify racism and sexism. It, because if racism and sexism exist in the status quo, they're just saying as long as that's deeply embedded, we should go ahead and use it. Like, that's not something we should be doing. We can't allow, like, if there's racism in the status quo, that's something that we should we should actually go up against and uh, go fighting against. We, we, we can't just keep using it just because it's deeply embedded. And... They're making this argument on how they're policy making, but the problem is that we're the ones that have, or they've conceded the argument that representations are going to be shaping policy making, as long as they've conceded that argument, they even try to say, like, we can look at both representation and policy making. Argument is, isn't that we have to look at, like, only one. We're just saying that representations are going to be shaping policy making. They've conceded that their representations are bad, so even if they are policy makers, they have to be fighting against uh, capitalism first. And, against our impacts, they're saying that we, they should be able to leverage their impacts against the impacts of capitalism, but, like, even if we let them do that, they're not going to be out. They're not going to be able to outweigh genocide and loss of value of life. So, extend the Zizek and Daily argument that, that, that uh, questioning of capitalist tendencies and prerequisite to ethical determination that people are turned into machines to, to, to treat it on economic uh, economic principles, and they're not actually treated. They're not actually treated as uh, they're not actually treated as human beings. They're not treated on human principles. They're treated on economic principles. They're not treated as human beings. People are losing their value of life. They've completely conceded that. And. Extend the Giro, uh, Giro evidence, which specifically talks about how neoliberalism has led to governmental collapse, uh, how neoliberalism leads to governmental collapse and leads to a gen gen mass genocide. You can look to the example of the Holocaust, where the Jews were scapegoated for Germany's economic problems, and because Germany was so focused on their economic problems, Hitler tried to find a scapegoat, and that, uh, like, capitalism allowed him to do that. So we should be rejecting capitalism when it causes genocide. Like, that can easily outweigh against all of their um, impacts. Like, yeah, the impact of 5,000 civilians versus genocide, which is a lot more. And loss of value of life will uh, will be a prereq, and saving value of life will always be a prerequisite to saving lives. Now on their perm, their perm doesn't make any sense because one, it's going to be separate from their, from all of their representations. Look to the argument they made earlier against their case. They're saying that they're using the deeply embedded value of capitalism. As long as they're doing that, they they won't be able to perm our case. Like that a perm doesn't even make any sense. They haven't even explained how exactly the perm would be working because it doesn't make sense. And don't let them sever out of the representations of capitalism uh, because that's going to be unfair. That's going to be strategy skew and time skew for us. Uh, that's going to be a voter uh, strategy. Skew, uh, that's going to be strategy skew and time skew for us because we won't be able to prepare against what they're saying because they'll just sever out of whatever they're saying. Um, and that's a voter for fairness and education. And. 
Uh, it, it's, you can you can cross fire cases of voting pick against an argument uh, against an argument of the perp. They're saying that there's a net benefit to the perp, but there really isn't because if you cross fire argument as a voting pick, you have to be able to solve it for capitalism before you can solve for any of their impacts. Because solving for capitalism is a prerequisite because it's the root cause of all of their impacts. As long as they consider that it's a root cause of all of their impacts, you're going to be evaluating capitalism, uh, finding capitalism first. They aren't doing a very good job of finding capitalism, especially when they tell you that they're using the deeply embedded value of capitalism. That's probably not something they should be doing, and. You can uh, you can classify all over all over, all of the links that we have. It's that's going to be a DA to the perm and links explain the links. All right, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll go back to the links. Um, you can extend the first uh, our, our first link, which talks about how empirically when, when, when the United States has gone into by terrorism and and, and, and talk, especially in the Middle East, it, it's all been for capitalist reasons. Like they're going into by terrorism. There's no guarantee that like it isn't for corporations to go in and dominate and. You can extend the fact that the, re the reason people are joining terrorist groups is because capitalism, uh, ca capitalism is, is forcing them to uh, join terrorist groups because they're out for a drive for money and if they can't get enough money because uh, the corporations are pressing everyone that they won't, they, they have to go out and join terrorist groups so they can find other ways to uh, earn money and feed their family. Like capitalism is the root cause for all their impacts. If they don't solve for cap, they can't solve for any of their impacts. And Extend the fact that back, uh, the poli and poli histories and the po political histories in the past have led to capitalism. You can look to the Iraq War where we led to threat construction happening. That similar thing uh, is what they're doing to both of Iraq. You can look to the Iraq War how we went in for capitalist reasons because we wanted the oil from Iraq. That Saddam Hussein wasn't giving us that oil, and, 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 and therefore um, we went into Iraq capitalist reasons. And Except a final link, um, that military aid has built, been built, built on a history of capitalism. It first started in World War II, where the United States was trying to find um, the Western nations to fight against Germany and Soviet Russia because they believed that they would harm their ideals of capitalism. Like, the history of military aid has been capitalist. So, those are all dissents to the perm as well. And there, there are other uh, pieces of argumentation against the... The other piece of argumentation uh, against alternative is that there's no, there's no clear alternative. First of all, we don't need a clear alternative. They consider our analysis in the bottom of the framing issue that even if they win that our alternative doesn't solve, you're still going to be voting negative because capitalism, uh, capitalism ha has to be fought against first as long as we're winning on any of our links. They're, they're going to be causing a now worse for capitalism because they're going to be increasing the amount of capitalism. So you just like vote neg on presumption because we're the only ones like not causing an increase in capitalism even if our alternative isn't able to solve. You still look to our representations. Their representations are pretty bad at the point at which, like, they're literally telling you that they're using the deeply embedded ideals of capitalism. And um, it, it's going to be a tire die scenario for the negative. Like, you, there's a chance that our alternative might work. And you can classify all of our arguments at, at an epistemological level. They're, they're apt knowledge, and their arguments are not value neutral because they, it, it's, it's kind of contingent on a specific separation of labor that helps a military elite. Like, you can classify that to the argument that there's no clear alternative. And we don't need a clear alternative because the revolution hasn't happened yet. And any alternative that we come up with will be built within a capitalist system. We have to first have the revolution, purge all capitalism, and then we think of an alternative. That's the only way to solve it. And extend the rule of the ballot that you have to vote for the better uh, for the debate or best solving for capitalism. They said that they're having more education by policy making, but they're conceding our gateway argument that it's a gateway to policy making. As long as that's been conceded, we're going to be winning the round on that because um, it's a gateway to policy making because we have to know our representations um, and that helps shape our policy. So whoever best fights against capitalism and thus has the best representation should be winning this round because they'll have the best policies. Now on to the case. They've conceded terminal defense on their case. We're making this argument. We're making this argument how they're not having. They don't have any internal warrants on how exactly Nigeria would be able to fight against Boko Haram with all with information only. Like they've conceded that. Cold conceded that terminal defense against their case because their whole case advantage depends on Nigeria being able to solve. But like if Nigeria can't solve, then uh, information won't even help them. And. Uh, it's in the first hedge turn. It's not dependent on capitalism. Hegemony directly leads to genocide. When, when we have like these ideals of ju uh, just uh, going out into other countries, that's going to be leading to genocide because that justifies like us going into like Vietnam and other countries where we cause genocide. And their argument against multi uh, it doesn't really matter. Like we have terminal defense against their case, and they're not doing a good job of capitalism. Uh, K. Framework, K. Robert, K. And practically like all the way. <clears throat> Alright. The biggest reason why you vote negative is because it's a try or die for the neg. 
If we're able to stop capitalism, you should be voting first. Even if it's not going to be working for solvency, you still still prefer our method because it's the only method given to you. They've considered three arguments about why we need to do this before we're able to have any sort of policy debate in the first place. They've considered three arguments. First of all, it's a gateway. They've considered the value of the method of debate is in trying to have a political query. If you don't know there's a problem when you say stuff like, uh, we're using the embedded and the ideas of capitalism, your solution will fail because you never actually understand things. This is also a dissection of permutation. I'll go over that first. Second of all, they will succeed your second argument that this often doesn't matter. Their often doesn't matter because it's in disguise of capitalism. They're always focused on creating corporations who have a better effect in society. They're always using these ideas or minds this probably means that they're never able to actually solve anything. Now, epistemology. They've conceded that the after knowledge are not value neutral. Only the only people that are actually helping are the military interests of society and how we have to function to get more like our tech or hegemony. This is very important because their knowledge should be suspect. This is why our last argument was that even if they win that our alternative doesn't really solve, you are you should teach and pedagogical understanding that their scholarship is inherently bad. This teaching of scholarship allows you as a judge to reorientate the way that we understand things. This is literally what the alternative was asking for, to shift away from capitalism, to shift the way that we understand capitalism, and to move away from that. They haven't understood the thesis of how the alternative will solve this. Problem is that they have not given a proper response. Let's get the capital proper. So let's do some way. First of all, they can see every single link. Problem is that we have a very, if we have a risk of an impact, you should probably vote for us because you only have the jurisdiction to vote for arguments that are able to solve capitalism. Because they can see four of our, four of our links, well, I'll even extend one of them. First of all, military aid was used to spend capitalism along what I need because they conceded it. They're only going to, they're going to be causing the two impacts. First was that we form, uh, because we destroy people's body of life, we form relationships with people not because they are uh, they are our friends, but simply because they're an economic interest to us. We gain value amongst them, which is pretty important because it's just one body of life. You are not my friend. You are a commodity to me. I can control you because I want things from you. Zig and Daly also talk, but this only creates for threats. The argument here was that threats are created because we want uh, threats are only created because of capitalistic ideas. Literally, the um, they've conceded the. Um, the Mohadin, uh, the Mohadin from Russia, where we were helping Afghanistan fight Russia, the capitalist understanding of our hegemony to protect ourselves was really what caused Al Qaeda. This also causes their impacts again. They only reinforce their impact because they're further understanding. They've also seen that as my second argument. The Giroux argument talked about the least government collapse and ensures the disease war and quote. We talked a lot about the Holocaust script coding, but when our card is, when our art editors also talk about government collapse, you can see that capitalism in itself might just destroy the Nigerian government, which is really important because that's what our argument talks about. Um, also, when you evaluate the world of the ballot, or when you evaluate the world of the ballot, or strong capitalism, the alternative is a very easy method for you to vote for, because it's the only method given to you. It's a methodology debate of how we're able to solve capitalism. That's what the world of the ballot asks for. Our argument is to stray away from capitalism because it teaches you to be anti pedagogical They made a couple of permutation arguments that don't really matter because they are severing out of the representations, which are really bad because representations come first. They've also considered that fiat is illusory from the framework argument. The problem is that they don't get access to their plan. Sure, policymaking may be good for education, but you're also going to see that your epistemological understandings are flawed. Therefore, you do not know what's good or what's bad in the first place. So you can't really talk about that. So it's a trying guide for the app. And so they're saying that some argument of how we really don't know what you're also able to solve, even if they win this argument. RK is the linear, or RK function is a linear disadvantage to their app. So probably means that we're going to outweigh even on NetBenefit if this is the real winning game. So let's go to the case arguments first. The, the biggest problem with their case was they really didn't extend it. You don't do the work for them. It only provides, it only justifies the judge intervention, which is going to be really, really hard for us to win rounds if they can simply make us a lot of arguments and only respond to like two of them, which makes it really hard. So don't judge intervene and extend any single argument for them unless they did it itself. Because of this, they don't really get any single impact of spillover or even the idea of how they get their impact because they're just responding to the arguments we made. So let's extend some arguments, or let's actually just go to the terminal defense argument, which is the most important thing. They're assuming, and assuming is bad, that's what my dad tells me. My argument is that because they assume the Nigerian government is able to do things or to fight Boko Haram, they're not actually gaining any solvency because they're not showing any single solvency of how Nigerian government is able to solve with surveillance. They tell you that. Surveillance allows these people to do things, but why? If they're claiming spillover that Nigerian government was only, we're going to go over the, the Boko Haram's going to go to other countries, probably shows that Nigerian government is not able to fight Boko Haram because losing a couple of children might not really cause your government to lose a war. Because of that, you should probably weigh our arguments first. Even if they win the net benefits argument, how they're really good in the first place, it doesn't really matter. The value of life is an independent disadvantage. Why they can't win? Because value of life is a prerequisite to actually what we do in the first place. Additionally, they are also continuing to ensure wars, disease, and class, which is more important than 5,000 lives, even though it's a weighing analysis on that. Problem is, the negative is the easy ballot vote for you. Roll the ballot solve.
So first off, I will address the issue of the K and then go into the motor issues. Or I'll address the K, then case, and then motors. So first off, um, this whole critique issue, I have uh, a couple of responses to this. So they talked about how uh, our perm doesn't make any sense. And I'll clarify, our perm is basically saying you can do the alter alternative and the plan at the same time. So you can do the plan and you can analyze the system. And so, uh, it, it's technical, so this actually helps in incremental solvency. We're not, like, we're not sh moving away from capitalism all in one movement. We're actually incrementally solving by doing the perm. We're actually we're looking at analyzing the system while doing this plan. And so this plan is essentially a critique because our plan we look at the consequences of our plan to help us analyze whether or not our plan um, actually does these things that they're talking about in creating terrorists and genocide and things like that. We look at the consequences of our plan, and so our plan is a critique of capitalism. And so um, my partner brought up the issue about synthesis and Hegelian theory, and basically we're saying that the perm, where we analyze it, where we analyze a synthesis, which is the antithesis plus the thesis, so we have the alternative plus the plan, and that creates a better world and a better analysis and a better way to evaluate whether or not capitalism is uh, what, what we have to do to uh, turn away from capitalism. And so also my partner brought up the no predictable uniqueness of on their K because, uh, because they, they talked about how Oh yeah, we're going to move away from capitalism and analyze things. So we don't know what the status quo is going to be like when they manage to move away from capitalism, so there's no predictable uniqueness for us to analyze their chaos. So we also uh, uh, promote education by using this synthesized perm. We actually are able to all, um, do the alternative plus the plan so we can analyze the system and evaluate um, capitalism while also doing our plan so we actually save lives as well as analyze the system about capitalism and whether or not um, we should move away from it. And so they talked about how this is a try or die and that if their alternative doesn't, um, if they don't have an alternative, then um, they should still win, which doesn't make any sense because if you don't have an alternative, then your K is useless because you're essentially just complaining about capitalism, but you don't have an alternative to it. So if their alternative does not, does not solve, then therefore their K does not work because they don't have an alternative. And so um, now I'd like to address the issues about all of the hedge terms they're talking about. Um, first of all, uh, the whole thing about genocide is not unique because in the status quo that our capitalist nations, it's not like everyone's dying in the status quo. Um, it, we're, not, we're not all committing genocide. And um, also in our plan, we aren't killing or intervening, so it's, it, I don't see the relevance of this. They talked about multipolarity, and my partner brought up how multipolarity also increases conflict, and how multipolarity, like in World War One, led to uh, multipolarity before um, World War One led to World War One, and so um, also uh, they talked about how we are telling the Nigerian government what to do. No, the Nigerian government already said that they're declaring war on Boko Haram. We're helping them with what they want to do. They also talked about how Nigeria can't solve. And so, again, this doesn't make any sense because in the status quo, Nigeria is clearly fighting against Boko Haram. They're rescuing civilians. They're trying to get children back. They have gotten a few children back, but not all of them. And they're trying to fight Boko Haram in Nigeria. So this shows that the Nigerian government can do something and is trying to do something and how our intelligence will help them. So now to come to the voters. Um, first voter is the perm. So essentially, our perm actually solves better than just their alternative because our perm looks at the plan and the alternative. So we actually save lives, but we can also use this plan and its consequences to evaluate the, um, the critique and whether or not capitalism does these things and how we should design our movement away from capitalism. So essentially, our, um, our, per, our, the government team's perm actually has incremental solvency and we look at both the issues of saving lives and the issue of capitalism, and so we, uh, we analyze the system as well as help save lives. So now looking at the impacts and net benefits, essentially under, our, uh, under the government team side, we actually are able to um, save lives in Nigeria while looking at capitalism and looking at the net benefits of capitalism and analyzing that system. So under the government team's world, we actually have greater net benefits because we incorporate the alternative K, we all incorporate the impacts of the K and the alternative, but we, we, take, we take it step by step and essentially we're saying we're gonna do the plan and we're gonna analyze the system and see where it goes from there because our plan can help us analyze the consequences and therefore uh, we can make better decisions on capitalism and things in the future.
high quality round, so all four of you are getting made really high space. Uh, I'm very impressed. And uh, let's, talk, let's talk about the pace. Um, so generally it is a good idea to have some ink on the case specifically, in case something goes bad in the K. But I think that your approach to that is bad because terminal defense is not a thing. Um, and looking at the specific argument, the argument is functional. They do need to provide evidence that the Nigerian government would be able to solve. I think this is a good point for you to put in um, your case, initially, like somewhere in your uniqueness. And the uniqueness should be two-pronged. First, the Nigerian government is really good at like conventional military strategy. I don't know if it's true, but you can probably find some evidence, right? You have 20 minutes of prep to end. This was a pre-announced topic area. Boko Haram was a pretty obvious choice uh, for the tournament. So, uh, when has Nigeria had military successes before? They probably had some. They haven't been conquered yet, so they probably had at least some. Um, and the second point under the uniqueness needs to be, uh, but they're really bad at intelligence. So that means like, United States intelligence is the one missing piece in the anti-Boko Haram strategy, right? So I think that evidence would have made your case a lot stronger and made you a lot less vulnerable to like take out uh, as, as the ones that they're pointing out. That being said, okay, so let's say you have a pretty good takeout. Read some offense. Like any blippy, terrible offense would be enough uh, if you win that defensive argument to win you that piece of paper. Really basic stuff like uh, this will increase recruitment for Boko Haram. Uh, this will piss off uh, some politicians in the United States, uh, like Rand Paul will cry. Um, th there are just so many, like anything that you can say once you took out like 99% of their offense, that's enough, right? Um, and I mean, you yourself tell me on their defense to your alternative that defense doesn't matter because there is a risk of offense. Like you yourself may try and die arguments. You don't get to say that and then on another sheet of paper go for terminal defense. Um, so, that's that. Uh, hegemony turns, um, I think, I mean, I don't, I'm guessing you were running them as a time suck because they didn't end up mattering in the end and you like semi-kick them. I would just kick them completely if you're not going for them because there is always a risk that like you miss something and they like have a turn somewhere in there. So if you're not going, just, just get rid of arguments that you're not doing. But I, th I mean, I think it was a good choice to kick them. I, I think that they were ran they were run badly initially, uh, to the extent that you were generally easy to flow, you were generally easy to flow. The one place on the flow that was really difficult to follow were the hedge turns. You told me that there's six. I got like three and a half. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how many I got, but it was just difficult to follow. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's look at the K. Um, the first response that I hear you making is the argument that like capitalism exists in the status quo, so as policymakers we're going to be capitalist. Um, I generally agree with um, uh, the negative team on the argument that if they indict like the system of policymaking, then you can win the argument that you're going to be a good policymaker, but still lose the round because if their logic is correct, then like becoming a policymaker within a capitalist framework is bad. Like you will be really good at your job, but your job will be evil. So I think that they're turning like the offense on a more fundamental level than the one at which you're debating. Like normally we say, oh, debate education is great. But what they're doing is they're questioning like the goals towards which that education leads us. So I don't think that argument can um, so then we have a discussion of the perm. I think the perm was pretty good. Um, and I think that what would have made it better is um, a more nuanced and a more stable text. Um, specifically, uh, they read four links, right? Um, and that means that you can't just do like the most basic perm, which is just do both, right? Well, you can do two things. Um, you can either address the links. The links are not very good 
in the sense that they're not very specific to your case, right? Um, so like link four, which is the one that they ended up extending, just tells us military aid has at some point been used to promote capitalism. Sure, but like the Soviet Union used military aid to promote whatever the Soviet Union had. Like it's a tool of foreign policy. I don't really understand why it would have any inherent uh, like ideological value to it. Um, and yeah, like the links, the links are just easy to either refute because they're like, or to say they don't apply specifically to surveillance drones. Um, so like oil, surveillance drones are not going to help us get oil in Nigeria. They're just not. Um, so you can just do that, like just go through the links. Um, and or you can do what you did, um, which is say that even if you can see the links, you should still be able to win because um, we can still um, sort of criticize an ideology. And that, that, that particular term, I don't think either side addressed particularly well. So starting with you, um, you sh should say something like, like the text of a perm, and this is more generic to critiques in general, the text of the perm would be something like, reject capitalism in all instances except this one instance, right? Um, and in this one instance, there may be some like capitalist <coughs> residue as their links imply, but that's fine because we can outweigh, we can't outweigh capitalism overall, right? Like that would be a losing battle because you don't really engage their impact story. But you can certainly uh, um, outweigh capitalist ideology in a very specific example, right? Because you're not like you shouldn't be. You shouldn't have to have a debate where you're weighing all of capitalism and like you know global coming of a revolutionary government to like helping like some country in Africa fight some like shitty terrorist group, like that puts you in a very uneven battle to begin with, right? But you can be comparing capitalism in that one instance versus benefits in that one instance. That's much easier for you. But if you do that, then you need to be more explicit about what particular discursive offense do you have coming out of combating Boko Haram? Uh, what can you counterpose to the capitalist implications of your policy? You can say, sure, our policy is capitalist, that's fine. But um, it promotes women's rights. It creates good relations between countries. Um, like lots of stuff, like anything, really anything that you have in your case can be leveraged uh, to have discursive impacts. And if those were more explicitly leveraged and weighed against capitalism, not just in general, but that in one particular instance, where the capitalist implications aren't even that strong. It's like, oh, you know, you sent a surveillance drone. Capitalism. Like, then you would have a fairly easy way of weighing. Okay. Um, but the way they were phrasing it is uh, talking, I think, about it was, it was not the problem, yeah, um, one problem was that it didn't really have a stable text, but my implication of it was that, or my inference of it was that, that it was sort of like a time frame thing. Like, you know, academics can be sitting here saying, is capitalism bad? Yeah, capitalism's bad. One day we're gonna have a revolution. Uh, in the meantime, there's like a bunch of things going on in the world right now that we have to deal with. So they seem to be phrasing it as a time frame argument. Um, and there, you, I mean, you do a decent job addressing it, and I give you a lot of leeway because it doesn't really have a stable text to it, but like, you shouldn't just rely on that, like, you should actually be generating arguments against all possible sorts of terms. Um, and like, why is it bad to be addressing uh, real world policy issues while we're discussing capitalism is a good question. Uh, luckily enough, under impact story, you have a lot of evidence from Zizek, uh, right? Yeah. And uh, Zizek specifically addresses that when he talks about the fact that there is this urge to 
reject uh, sort of theorizing and move specifically to some like really straightforward action that seems really obvious. And like that urge needs to be suppressed because uh, even if we say like, oh, let's just do with this one thing, and then we can start thinking about the grander picture. But then after that one thing, like some other emergency comes in, it's like, oh, ISIS, oh, you know, Ebola, and you, like you never stop to think about the underlying structure <coughs> that causes all of these things. Um, I mean, I, you, you can look up specific literature, right? Yeah, yeah. But like that would get you a much stronger link into the K based on their in-round discourse than just they did something vaguely military, so they must be like bourgeois, right? So you should try to use your literature to generate more like round specific links, I think is what I'm looking for. Because my biggest problem with your K is it's like too generic. Um, yeah, but I think the one argument that I buy and the reason why I end up voting neg is they're telling me that capitalism is the root cause of um, like all of the harms that are going on. And so that means that the risk of offense of solving capitalism um, flows their way, right? Now, I generally don't think that root cause arguments should be a silver bullet in debate. Um, like, if a per uh, okay, like if a person has some sort of a disease, right, um, and uh, Let's say like um, I'm trying to think of the disease. Okay, let's say let's say that um, they get diabetes because they don't like lead a healthy life, right? So the time, like the specific moment where they like collapse on the floor, right? We can create like palliative short-term measures to make sure they don't die right there in the moment, and not be like, well, you know, what we really should be doing right now is having a discussion about you know, healthy uh, uh, eating habits uh, instead of like helping that person right at the moment, right? So you can make <coughs> arguments that just because something is a root cause doesn't mean it outweighs like every instance. Sure, capitalism might be the root cause of Boko Haram, but now that Boko Haram is already here and it's gonna kill people like tomorrow, maybe we should deal with that first before we do go to root cause. But because you don't really do that weighing, they, and they tell me root cause comes first, then I think it's a, it's a neck ballot. Uh, any questions? Um, so, the links were really generic. You, so, our my question would be: Did you like evaluate the arguments that like um, that terrorism was created because of like capitalist tendencies? Was that just like really generic? And you're just like, sure. Capitalism was created because I mean, sorry, uh, uh, terrorism is created because. Sorry, yeah, my bad. Terrorism is created because of capitalist tendencies. Fine. Would their specific policy fuel capitalism or terrorism? Oh yeah, no, yeah, I understand. Yeah, they're, yeah, I get it. Do you think if we function the head insurance as more leveraging like capitalism, like would they have been like really generic as well? Like the argument that we were talking about, um, as in that these threats were created like the Mujahideen or like we went to Russia. Mujahideen. Mujahideen. Yeah, it was something. Mujahideen. Mujahideen. Yes. So we created the Al Qaeda because right. we wanted to. Fight capitalism against communism. Sure. Was that like? Is that also considered a generic argument too, or how in depth is like? Or I'm sorry, I don't really know like how specific I should be going in their case with like a link. Um. So, I mean, it's a good example, but can you think of any like? Here's the thing: the Nigerian government has been a very pro-Western government. The Nigerian government has been like implicated in all sorts of capitalist policies that have been impoverishing the population. Like, there's a reason why Boko Haram is roaming Nigeria, and probably doesn't have to do with, like, uh, you know, uh, population-friendly government policy. Nigeria government has been doing that primarily because its, like, main economic function is to, like, supply oil to the United States, which is one of its main customers. Uh, like, there, there's a lot of history in the cooperation between Nigeria and the United States specifically, and the development of capitalism not like as an abstract concept, but like capitalism specifically in Nigeria, as it specifically harms the lives of Nigerian people that you don't really touch. Yeah. 
I get it. Okay. Um, how do you vote the rule of the bell debate? I think it was, I mean, I think they dropped it, so I extended it. You extended it, like, yeah. yeah. All right, so even if they won their app, like, would you say value, like, they I mean, I think they could generate discursive impact from the app if, if, if they spent more time on doing that and more function under your role of the ballot, but the role of the ballot itself, I bought. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah. Um, did you, like, buy the alternative that we have, or should we make it more specific? Um, no, I think, like, Arguments that we should overthrow capitalism before creating a very specific alternative to capitalism, I tend to buy. Um, so, if, if I, I mean, I think it worked fine, especially in this round. Um, if I were to get more specific, it wouldn't be like, well, instead of capitalism, we're going to create anarcho syndicalist communities, and this is how many votes every single like canton is going to get. Um, so the details wouldn't really be there so much as the details in the strategy of overthrowing capitalism. Um, so those could go into alt text or I guess in the alt solvency. But uh, like, even though I'm voting for you, I'm still a little bit murky on like exactly how like step by step what my ballot is going to achieve. Oh, do you think that the argument that we made of that as you as an educator who teaches pedagogy of teaching should challenge? Capitalism as like one of those methods, or should we be making like that's fine. But okay, so like I challenge capitalism. What's going to happen now? Like, are you guys going to grow up to become revolutionaries, or what's going to happen? Oh yeah, I understand it. Yeah, let me see how we change. All right, awesome. Thank yeah. you.